What's up, YouTube? I'm back with another video, man. I'm back with another banger, man. I'm back. I'm ready. You know, Happy New Year to y'all. You know, it's the seven. It's January fifth right now, man. 2021. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So look, a lot of you guys, you know, aren't people I've played with. Or a lot of people I've beaten been asking how come I can play this good with a small forward. Like, the way I made this small forward, it's like a guard, but better for you. What I mean by that is, let's say it got height advantage. You know how a lot of guards want to be, oh, I want to be a point guard, 6'9". This small forward is literally that, but 6'6". Six, six. Okay? Whatever build. I call it the Kevin Durant build. The best small forward build. Everyone has slept on this build since day one. Since 2K19. Matter of fact, since 2K20. No one has made that this build that I'm about to make. And this is on 2K21 right here. I have been... That's why I have over 60 win percentage. Y'all already know that. Every game I show y'all won, I be winning. I don't lose. <laughs> I don't lose. I already play against Elite Legends. Against YouTubers. Not big, big YouTubers, but, you know, YouTubers, you know what I mean? All of that, man. It's ease. You know, easy, man. But, look, let's get to you. Let's get straight into it, bro. Just, just put your position as a small forward, right-handed, and the jersey number 35, because I am KD. Let's continue. See, the, I'm going to tell you this. The best pie chart for 2K21 and 2K20 that everyone has slept on is the green and the blue mixed together dog for some reason people I'm gonna tell you what's different between this build and this build this build which I thought I'd be like ah, I can get more finishing because I wanted to get you know more you know contact up easier and faster before I got a 95 you know but according to 2k and how trash it is if you pick this right here even if it says three uh, three point at 74 for 2k 21 since this is 2k 21 pie chart you will not make a three-pointer. I'm going to tell you guys this. Any build you make and you want to know how to shoot with it, if it got gold, like the maximum of getting of, of it going to the highest is gold, do not use that build. Do not upgrade that build. For some reason, on 2K21, you cannot shoot with a badge that have a gold badge or the maximum of gold. For some reason, according to 2K21, but according to 2K20, it's different. You can have... You can have I don't know, man. You can have this build right here, I guess, or something like this. If you got gold badges, not the Hall of Fame version, you're not hitting your shot. I'm sorry. You're not. No matter how much. You can have green machine, difficult shot, range extender, all on gold, man. You're not hitting your shot. So back to what I was saying. I picked this by mistake, but then I made, you know, I realized my mistakes and I was wrong. So I went back with my 2K20 build with the GOAT in it, bro. See right here, this this build right here is the best build, and you're gonna dribble like a you're gonna dribble like a guard, man, and you're gonna play like a you're gonna. This is the best Kevin Durant build. I'm gonna show you why, bro. We're gonna click into this, bro. See the speed is a lot of people rather pick this right here, but I usually pick this right here. Why? Cause I got strength. When I got strength, man, most that's why I be scoring through the rim against anyone, especially against a center. When you have this. First off, you're gonna get bodied by a center. You might be like, ah, I'm not gonna play against the center. Why would I play against the center? Nah, you're gonna. There's gonna be times where you switch offensively, setting screens. People gonna be spamming screens, and and you're gonna be there to be needed, bro. So, if I were you guys, trust me, this right here is good. Why? Cause look, first off, 75 plus four, right? Cause matter of fact, yes. Yeah, Cause look, if you win a championship. On your first year, second year, third year, whatever year. If you want a championship, or could, if you want a championship or get a gym rat, that already is a plus four, which is a 76, 77, 78, 79. That right there is an automatic 79 off rip. Plus, when you get to 99, let's count it together 80, 81, 82, 83, and 84 speed. First off, that strength right there, that's a 72, is going to be high. Very, very, very high. It's going to be like 80. I'm just saying. And and as a small forward, when you have that much speed, I'm telling you, you're goaded. Don't go with this one. As much as you can be like, oh, I can have speed and all of that, it's not that good. I'm telling you, man. This right here is better. So, here goes to the GOAT. 
Look, we gonna upgrade this. This is gonna be the best offensive build of all time. We gonna upgrade all of these straight into it. People might be like, I don't need this. Look, if you upgrade this, you get more badges. Just saying, you get more badges, man. That's that simple. You get more badges. You could upgrade this right here, you know, you know, free throws. People might be like, why would you wanna upgrade that? Like, you're not gonna use it. But you want shooting badges, don't you? Exactly. This right here get the maximum. If you upgraded all of it, you get the maximum of 17. Now people might be like, what about your defense? I'ma tell you this. If you want if you're smart at 2K, you're not one of those people that have a low win percentage, no disrespect. If you're smart, please make this build. Cause you will be raw. Because look, people might want defensive badges, but look, if you have IQ and have great defense IQ and you have a teammate, this this definitely apply if you have a teammate that you play with 24/7 or mostly with your squad. If you don't have a squad, the defensive slash rebounding may come to a dis disadvantage, but not that much. It depends on it depends on how smart you are as a as a player. So, if I were you guys, I'll upgrade this and upgrade this. Simple. People might be like, ah, you can upgrade defensive rebounds. You probably get some blah 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 blah. Look, it ain't gonna help, buddy. It ain't gonna help. So even if you did this, it ain't gonna help, man. That's why I apply to the lateral quickness and perimeter defense. See, if you wanted to be like Kevin Durant, like KD, KD, <laughs> you know, make your player skinny, bro. But I usually make my player burly or built because look, if you make your player built, for some reason, this is like a this is like a mental strength right here. For some reason, when you make your player built, it makes it makes you feel like you could body anyone. This doesn't affect your strength or anything, but what does it make is like it makes you feel like, oh yeah, I'm stronger than you. Cause look, for example, a skinny center and a fat center or a big skinny or a burly center, you might be like, this man is skinny. He can eat. No, cause like the skinny center, it actually affects you mentally. Cause like now you think, oh, I can't body him or, or I don't know, man. You you just you just think like you can't. You know, you can't do nothing on them. You feel skinny. That's why it makes it realistically. But if you're f burly, you actually think, like, you actually have that advantage. As much as people think, oh, that doesn't affect you. No, nah, it affects you. It actually helps you score in the rim or anything you do physically. So I usually pick burly. Have all muscles. This is all where it depends, man. If you pick this right here, you are automatically greatness. I'm telling you. Do not make this build a 85, a six foot five man, or a six foot seven, or six foot eight, six foot nine, six foot ten. That's just worse. The perfect way is to make it six foot seven, six foot six. I'm gonna tell you why, cause I'm explaining everything and why you should make this build and why I'm that good at using this build. First off, that's why I said it's a guard, but a better version of a guard because look, okay, look, a six foot six player is better than a six foot three. You're taller, more versatile, and more better. Uh, people might be like, how about other taller small forwards? Look at this. Look at it this way. A lot of people that make a small forward for some reason, even they make it 6'7 or 6'8, they're not shooters, by the way. They're not. They're going to try to drive in. Plus, your build already got, it's already meant for defense if you have the right defensive badge, which I'm going to show you guys the, the what badges to put on on each end on any finishing, shooting, and playmaking, and defensive badges, what to put on. But before we get to that part, 6'6 six six is way better than the 6'7 because, look, now you are a better finisher. You can actually dunk on people because, look, first off, when you reach a 99, usually this build on la last year, usually this build, the, the driving dunk would be an 80, so, like, it would be easier to make it to, like, an 85 at least or an 87, but... You can dunk on people. You won't have con you won't have the contact dunk on 85 because that's what you need for a pro or or you know like a, a strong one. Now you you might as well get you probably gonna get small contact dunk if you get it over an 82 or an 83. So you know, but like you still can dunk on people. My and, and you can shoot on people. So you got a big advantage against anyone that guards, especially a guard, because now a guard, you can guard a guard easily. This player right here is fast enough to guard a guard. Not a not, not a slashing playmaker, because a slashing playmaker can just blow by past you, but with the right people you play with, it's simple. Six foot six. 
Usually I make my build not not skinny and not tall, not not fat. You know what I mean? Cause like your strength mess up, it mess up the purpose of what I said of picking that chart, the physical chart. So that's why I keep it the normal. Usually I'll just put it like this, 76, 73 to make it usual, like to make it you know fair. But I don't know, you know, I I don't know. Usually I usually just put it at 73 right here it's perfect it doesn't really mess up anything it's just perfect you know it's just perfect so I usually put it on 73 my wingspan this is the part where you're like oh, I got a 78 three-pointer you know this is where I like to put it on 80 points 80 80.7 wingspan usually people don't like it because usually people like longer arms you know like especially this one right here this actually helps Cause now you got now you can shoot more better and you got a driving finisher. Look, if look, it it can go either way. If you want if you want a build that can that can finish more better, like like you're you can just drive it against the center and just finish. I re I recommend you choose this one because this is way better. Cause it doesn't affect your shooting, your playmaking, or your defense. It just helps your attribute your finishing attribute, which is awesome. I ain't gonna cap. But if you do this, you can shoot better. But I'm gonna tell you this guys. I'm gonna tell you this if I were you guys personally, you know help you I would pick this one 83.4. I really would Because because you can now finish more better than others Definitely you you definitely can go in that rim and dunk on someone now this right here helps you get these Contact dunk size like the pro or, or elite cuz look 81 82 83 like it helps you a lot very much just being honest with you but if you want to shoot better like I said here it goes with the 80 but I recommend you do this right here now to take over now according to 2k21 this is the same build we're making for 2k20 and 2k21 if you wanted to make it on either one if you're on 2k20 put the finishing badge this helps a lot if you're on 2k21 this right here helps big time for some reason you any for some reason in this game that's why a lot of people make guards or shooters for some reason in this game your build can shoot mag magnificently if you have a shooting take and you got hall of fame shooting this right here is the goat post i don't use the post unless you're a post score like if you're kd or kd but i'm not really gonna use that that much you know like it, it, nah. I'd rather use the shooting shot, man. I'm sorry. You know, I'm not. And the, you know what's the good thing about it? The reason why a lot, like me, I picked the slashing takeover over the over the shooting takeover last year is because I want my build to be a disguise. What I mean by that is, look, the name is a slasher. You ain't gonna finish, and you got a finishing take. People not people not gonna take you serious on shooting the ball that much. When you start shooting, they're going to be like, wow, you really got that much takeover and all of that? Yeah, you know what I mean? It's a cover-up. But for 2K21, you need it. I'm sorry. You just need that shooting takeover, man. So I'm going to test the build for you guys so I can show you guys, like, what badges to put on and stuff and all of that. This is a walkthrough through my build that I made on 2K21. I mean, on 2K20, and I'm going to make it on 2K21. Make it a 99 overall, and this is the badges I put on. That's gonna make you goaded. Trust me. First off, put your contact finish on Hall of Fame and then put your relentless finish on Hall of Fame. What this does is usually people will put this on gold just to have more badges, but this is horrible. Or you can just put it like this. When you drive, no matter what your stamina is, relentless finisher helps you. So when you drive, let's say you're driving, like even you you're obviously gonna hold R2 when you're driving to the rim. So you can make so you can make your finishing. What relentless help finisher helps with is finishing through the layup or or dunk at the rim. What I mean by that is when you're running, your stamina is already going down. It's it's not that down. It depends on if you got handle for days for this build, which I'm gonna tell you have to have it. But this really depends because when you if you have this on gold or you don't have it at all, this make this will make you take a layup that you regret taking like why would you go that way or why would you go this way because you're my player is for some reason too just trying to make it realistic where when you're tired 
You're just taking, you're just putting it up at this point. You're not even trying at this point. So if you have a relentless Hall of Fame, it does not affect you at all on finishing and one layup or any type of layup or any type of way. Fancy footwork. Oh my gosh. The reason why, the reason why your driving layups is over at 80 because if I were you guys, this fancy footwork on gold is amazing. If you pick the Kyrie Irving, when you drive the circus layup, you know, it's called a circus layup. Kyrie, if you tap square, it does that, you know, oh my gosh, you know, it does that behind the back layup, you know what I mean, it does that Jamal Crawford-ish, you know, all of that mixed together, so like, you can get wide open in the layup, and that's why I like abusing the fancy footwork, slithery finisher, people might think, oh, I, why do you need slithery finisher, look, for some reason, according to 2K, slithery finisher is like a dead eye, or a steady shooter, but finishing wise, so, what I mean by that is, when you drive, someone could be behind you or someone could be beside you, right? If you drive, you're, he don't have to jump. If you, if you, got, if you don't got this slithery finish at all, and he, and you drive, and he, don't, and he don't jump, for some reason, it probably going to add like a 37% a contest or a 38. And your mod player probably can miss that, depending if you don't have relentless finisher. So, all of that on gold mixed together with relentless finisher, you're unstoppable at the rim automatically. Now, a lot of people misjudge Acrobat. Acrobat is the reason why people make layups contestedly. Contact finisher is the point where you make layups like you're stopped at the center rim or, or you know, making a, a dunk on in traffic. The way, That's why it says in traffic. So, when you go at the rim, you're just automatically dunking it. Contact finisher is there for. Laying it up, contact finisher is there for. But when you go out the rim and you see a player does a reverse layup or or like he you like that BS man, there's just no way. That acrobat is the reason why he makes it. And that's why I like to put it on gold. The next badge that I like to put it on is Giant Slayer. Because a lot of people for some reason you might miss against a guard, according to 2K. But this right here makes you make it against a center. And you're gonna be raw. Now that's what I. That's the badges I rock with. If I really want to be dominant at the rim, both sides. But if you don't want to be that dominant for some reason, according to I don't know, is your view? Put consistent finisher as your silver badge if you made it all like this. But you'll be still good, but you won't be. Okay, if you put this as like as your as your setup, you will be good at finishing through the rim, but you won't be dunking as much on people so like even if you had a wide open lane like that really wide open lane but you want to dunk on somebody this bad setup right here you're not really gonna dunk on somebody i'm sorry you're no nah, you're not getting that contact finish anything on gold according to gay it's horrible it's not even as effective so that's why i like putting it on here and here and it helps a lot you know it very much does and that's why I get that as my finishing. I'm not going to take too long on each one of them. I'm just helping you guys to get better at 2K and get some cheesy builds. So, uh, the re the great thing about 2K21 is they took out Quick Draw to, as a badge. So now you can just, uh, you can just you know, make your player shoot faster or slower without even making it as a badge. So, you get more chances, more space, more everything at doing anything. Last year on 2K20, you get 20 20, 17, 1. So 20 shooting, 20 finishing, 17 playmaking, and 1 defensive badge. This year, they made the shooting badge 22. So, put this on Hall of Fame. Now you're just green like KD. I'm sorry. You're Kevin Durant. You know? You're KD. You know? Uh, a lot of people like putting Green Machine on Hall of Fame. I wouldn't mind that. Deadeye. See, the thing about Deadeye is... People might say, oh, why do you why do you have Deadeye? You're not gonna shoot in front of someone's face unless you're stupid. The thing about Deadeye is it's like it's like slithery finisher. Someone you can you can break someone's ankles off the rip, man. You do a step back, like a snatch back, snatch snatch back, step back, bro. If you shoot it, and that player is not far away from you, you're automatically getting contested to like 10% or 5%. If you have this on Hall of Fame, you're a great shooter. You see how people be making shots in front of your eyes like, how's that no contest? Like, Deadeye's there. You know, Deadeye is right there for you, man. So, I like putting Deadeye on gold. 
for this for this build. Uh, volume shooter. Um, I had it limited to silver, even though I wanted it to be on gold. But I'd rather have it on silver. I'm sorry. I I'd rather have it on silver. It works both ways, silver or gold. Gold is better, but silver. Yeah, it, it's there because you already got the badges for it. Uh, if you want to be KD, KD man, I'm saying like Kevin Durant exploiting the whole rim, exploiting the whole goal, exploiting everything. Difficult shot on Hall of Fame is amazing, bro. When I say amazing, amazing. Cause look, on gold, difficult shot on gold, you cannot make a moving three at all. If you're expect, if you're like, if you want to be like a Tysino small forward. No, Tysino is the best shot creator of all time. I gotta name him that. I'm the best small forward build of all time. I am the best small forward of all time. I am one of the best sharpshooters of all time. Matter of fact, the best small um sharpshooter on 2K19. Cause my my win percentage, bro. I'm telling you, I win. Not only that, bro. I had over 1,000 wins. Like what I mean by that is, I was I was not less than 1,000 if that makes sense. I, 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 it's like I played 3,000 games or 2,000 games or something like that and and I did not lose over 900 I mean over 1,000 games on 2K19 so I probably had like 960 losses 970 losses or 950 losses or probably 800 but that's beside the point because I sometimes go on 2K20 I mean on 2K19 and just sell on purpose like to have fun or I just play to have fun, no matter who I play with. Well, you know, I play with rookies now on 2K19. Just have fun, you know? Plus, that, that game is broken. Uh, 2K, I've never even chose to go back to that game to fix anything they had on that. So, yeah, you know? But difficult shot, if you want to be able to make any shot on a three-point line anywhere on the court, difficult shot is the best choice to make. This is perfect. Now, flexible release. For some reason, according to 2K21, they made this badge valuable. On 2K20, your shot meter, all you got to do is time it. You're good. Like, you, if you can't time your shot, like, you shouldn't be able to play 2K. But the way they made the shot meter this year, they made a black line where you got to time that black line. You can't even see where you stop at. People might think, oh, if you stop at one of those bars, you're probably going to make it. No. According to 2K... You gotta stop at that black line. If you make it anywhere on before that black line or after that black line with the bars in it, you probably still make it, but you'll most likely miss. Okay? You will most likely miss. It's crazy, man. That is very much crazy. So, like, usually I put it on silver or gold just to make things better for me. But besides that, yeah, you know, I have to have it on on gold because it helps me a lot. You know, it helps me very much. It very does. So, if I were you guys, I'll put flexible release on gold just to make sure you don't miss any shot, especially wide open. Especially wide open. Now, according to 2K, again, they made catch and shoot valuable. Again, they made every badge in this game more valuable than they're supposed to. So, if I were you guys, I would put catch and shoot on silver. For some reason, if you catch the ball, if you're not... I know a lot of y'all not a catch and shoot guy, but catch and shoot very much helps you. First off, it actually speeds up your jump shot to make your jump shot faster than it is. And you're going to make a shot off of catch and shoot. Unlike a lot of people, they can't even make a catch and shoot shot without it. Without it. But if you think, if you believe in yourself that, like, you know, like you can catch the ball without needing catch and shoot, like, you can make it without, like, catch and shooting, be my guest, man. Be my guest, right? Take it off. And I recommend you put this on Hall of Fame as well. Or, or put this on gold and just have Hall of Fame badges just like that. You will be very much effective either way. But... You know, I put this on silver, and then I put this on silver, and yeah, I'm that raw, you know? Yes, sir! I'm making you guys look great out here, bro. It's crazy, bro. I'm making you look, you know, amazing out here. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Guys, while I'm showing you guys go to the playmaking badges, please subscribe, man. 
please do. Please. I, I very much, you know, say thank you if you did, bro. Because, like, you know, it's very much amazing. It's helpful. And I, it makes me know that I'm doing great on YouTube. So, yeah. So, you know, blah, 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 blah. Next video, playmaking. <laughs> playmaking, my guy. Playmaking is so amazing. Now, this is the part where I say you could be a guard. In any way, shape, or possible. Okay? Um, this is how we're going to start it off to make it quicker. Handle for days on gold. This is the max you need, man. Handle for days on gold is awesome. Quick first step. This helps you on the finishing part or snatch backing or doing any type of special move. If you really want to be a guard guard, like break people ankle, I recommend you put this on tight handles. Pluckable on gold also. Okay, and bailout. You can still make passes on bailout if you bailout pass, but I don't know. Like, if I were you, I'd put it on silver still just to help you. And then the rest... I usually put it on space creator because when you shoot when you do a step back it actually create big space for you but it all depends on who you are as a player or you can make it as ankle breaker but either way I like it to be like this that's what I usually put my setup as okay everything right here is just raw you know I'm a guard I'm everything hmm now if you guys wondering Defense. Now, everyone might be like, oh, I'm going to put my defensive badges on Intimidator. You know, just put it on Intimidator, you know. Nah, that ain't going to work, bro. I'm sorry. That ain't going to work, man. I got a better badge that, that's going to help you with that, and it's going to do extra stuff for you. First off, especially a center that can score. Oh, my gosh. A center that's dominant in the rim, right? If you don't want a center to start scoring when you like crazy or anyone, I'd rather put you chase that artist on on bronze because look if you get blown by by a guard this helps you a lot for some reason this helps you a lot you're gonna go chase down that person and you're gonna snatch that ball out of their hands that's why I'd rather have this it's all that quick I press triangle and you can pick Kevin Durant Kevin Durant is the best shooting jump shot okay it works it's great all of it thank you guys for watching man don't forget to please subscribe, man, and leave a like and share with other people. Thanks.